Okay, so if you watch the video, you'll see, you'll see this happening. I just created, I just sort of made an entire tutorial for this, but then I realized that Screencast if I stopped recording, and I practically died on the spot. But anyway, uh, um, it still hurts. I'm going to be showing you how to make this today. So I'm assuming you're already familiar with the Blender interface. It's really hard to explain that. So I'm just going to be... It's more of a walkthrough than... I don't even know what to call it, but... It's not exactly a tutorial, but if you're familiar with... Sort of, at least sort of familiar with Blender interface, this will be okay. So, so I'm just going to open up a new Blender tab. Save it. Save it. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to hit... Here the moms. Okay, so anyway, I'll open a new thing. You'll be greeted with with this. Look at these friendly shapes. Hit A and hit delete. Um so anyway, add I'm gonna add a spotlight. This is gonna be our light rays. Just put it wherever you want. This time I think I'm going to do it top down, but actually I think I'm going to try to make this resemble the lemon in the video. So anyways, pull this uh, backward a bit so that it's a bit narrower. So now, if I go into render view, I'm going to switch over to cycles because it's better. We get nothing. To fix this, add a cube. Now it's taking a bit longer to render because there's actually something to render. So let's make it really, really, really big. Not that big. We don't want it too big because uh, the bigger it is, the longer it takes to render because this is a volumetric. So go into shading tab and then delete this material because we don't want it. And, and uh, hit add search volume and just click on Principled volume, plug volume in the volume, and then and then change the volume, volumetric, uh, density, volume, volume, volume down to a point zero one. And now, if I go into here, I get uh, this, which is pretty nice. You notice that the spotlight isn't shining through it. It's a nice thing it did. It's just the fact that it's really, really weak. So it shows up to one hundred thousand. So, uh, when I did the lemon video, it was orange, but since it's uh, kind of underwater, I'm going to think it's kind of bluish color. Also, I'm going to go into material preview and check seamless, seam world, so it renders faster. Well, can you this faster? Hit add mesh plane, and then just scale it up to see that it blocks out the light. That's good. So, uh, anyway, move it very quite, move it quite close to this thing, and just uh, rotate it. And then scale it down so it, you don't want it too big. You only want it big enough to watch uh, this thing. And God says, like, you know what? I'm just gonna turn off selectability, selectability for my volume. Boom. I'm just gonna turn that off. So now it's much easier to select things, or maybe it's just that I turned off selectability for the clean. That's gonna be more than it. Anyway. I'm going to scale this down and move it so it blocks this out, but only just big enough to do so. Now I'm going to edit mode and subdivide it, and subdivide it again, and then do that up to 10. Actually, I'm up to uh, 20. Now that gives us more geometry to delete. If we see for circle select, this kind of broad. Random patterns, draw random reverb. How many cheese? I think I'm just trying to steal cheese. I think I'm just trying to light the cheese and give you some good rays. So now we have uh, these nice light rays. Okay, now we have these nice looking light rays. So, I, I just said that, didn't I? Well, anyway, now we need a lemon. This is a, a random thing to say, but we really, really do. So don't add in Nyko Sphere. Add in a UV Sphere. So, sorry for that, my weird uh, accent. 
I have expanders in there. Or they do not hurt, but they are very annoying. Anyway, uh, go, go into the scope and uh, you want to go up here and click on X so it's off. You don't want it just to be mirrored. And uh, now, let's go into the clay brush and just uh, kind of. Well, I'm going to turn off seeing the world so I can see it a bit better. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to go into viewport mode just so that it's a bit easier to see. So I'm just going to sculpt. This is, uh, you're hearing all, I'm so sorry if you're hearing a bunch of weird bangs or something. It's the blob thing. It's just that, uh, rotating my hand shakes the table, which is inferior. Anyway, uh, so it is kind of sculpt. Sculpt your thoughts. Sculpt your imagination. Sculpt a limit. And uh, it, it's good if it isn't perfect because you want kind of an organic looking shape. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm a little worried when a uh, screencast if I'm going to run out of time because I forgot to set camera. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to do this, do that. I'm using the smooth brush, brush to kind of flatten it out and do a more into a more lemon like shape kind of look at old old except it's a sphere except it's an oval except it's I don't know what to call it call it a lemon and uh, so now I have this lemon thing I'm just going to use the blob thing again to kind of wiggle 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 and poke them out poke them out poke them out so, it's definitely the most chill part of uh, doing this. Other parts can be rather intense. Hmm, so now, I'm done making a really interesting looking lemon. Just uh, go into modifiers, tab, add, subdivision surface. Turn it up to 2 and 2, and then hit apply, and right click on it and hit shade smooth, man. My expanders are. So now, drag this um, around to what? Uh, open up a new shader editor, and just hit new. And now, this time we're going to keep the principal VSDF and create a uh, color. Don't look at the color on the base color, but look at the lemon changing color. Do you have something that looks like a lemon? What if you do? Don't do that. Because uh, it will be a bit more washed out. Kind of like that. No, nah, it's a bit too colorful. Colors aren't good. Well, anyway, so now, now comes a bit more complicated stuff. Even though it's not that complicated. You add search up uh, must. Search up must and you'll get must texture. Now I'm um, now I add a color ramp. No, not the vertex color wrong one. Um converter uh color ramp. You can use the search for that. Plug the factor. Plug the fact into fact. And uh now now grab um a this Placement node. Okay, so we had in our displacement node. Uh, if I sound like all of a sudden I got really hyped, I have to keep stopping and stop recording and uh, keep going because screencastify isn't in that. So here's where the magic happens: plug color into height, and then plug displacement into displacement, and you'll get this. This is weird. So. You just go over to the Musgrave texture and just turn, just turn the scale way up. Not that much up, but not, not down, but up. Until you get something that looks a bit like a lemon. That's a lemon. So anyway, turn up detail, turn up, uh, turn, maybe turn down dimension. 
turn up, whatever that is. Now I'm gonna be turned down and turn up. Turn up. Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry. But uh, anyway, now we have a lemon. This is a look pretty good looking lemon, right? So uh, with our lemon, uh, Texan world, and now we just now we have our lemon doing the lemon thing. So I added a cylinder for our uh, pillar and change vertices to seven. Now I have this and uh, scale it up on the Z axis. Uh, scale it up on this. You know, every time I play Minecraft and I have to type in some command that involves coordinates, uh, and I just I, I, I'm just gonna animate this to kind of move around a bit like this. Every time I play Minecraft and I have to do, use some command that requires coordinates, I always think that Z is up and I always mess it up. So look at this. It's going around. So now what? Uh, now we need the lemon to kind of do that rotation thing. So just go to frame zero. Go in under under object properties and uh, hit hit uh, this little circle here. So it turns into a triangle for a Z rotation. Go to frame two hundred fifty and uh, type in three hundred sixty and just uh, hit that triangle again. So now it'll do this. It'll rotate around. But this is exactly what we want. So anyway, so we're gonna go into uh, our graph editor. And just still right click on this and hit, and hit vector. And now, now we have uh, this thing that just rotates around. And uh, so now we can uh, go into location, uh, and this keyframe uh, location Z, and just uh, turn on auto keyframing. And now what? Uh, move 50 frames and just move it up a bit um if you want a bit more of a natural look uh you probably want uh to do it by copying and pasting keyframes but uh if you're just gonna do this interesting kind of weird looking look uh you might want to do this by hand so now we have this Also, uh, if you do it by hand, you don't get this weird glitch that you get. It looks a bit more natural. Doing it by hand is just usually better. So now we have this. I'm just going to take this light and make it even more bright. Uh, one, 150,000. Right, now I'm going to start uh, showing you how to render this. So first, uh, check the motion blur because it's cool. Under color management, uh, under look, it'll say none. Don't keep it there. Turn it to high contrast. So now we have uh, this lemon is being lemoned on a pillar. So uh, go under here and just uh, give an output folder. Um, this always happens. Lemon. For tutorial, and uh, so another thing you want to do is uh, change the a uh, sample sound to fifteen, which makes it much lower quality. And if you're like, why do you do that? So make okay, so it it actually turned out I was about to edit the tutorial when uh one of the files had actually corrupted one of the files had actually corrupted so this is uh after i recorded all the other parts but what i did in here is i basically went over here it was at 128 like you might have seen i changed this to 15 then i went into compositing and this one like that this was just plugged into here and now i hit add b noise and it's Put that there, check the noise data, put noise image into image, normal into normal, albedo into albedo, and then I add that. Then I add the camera, 
that the camera and I showed you a uh, cool thing. So whatever uh, angle you're looking at it, uh, if you add a camera, it'll it'll be rotated to the same angle that your viewport uh, thing is at, which is handy. Because uh, now if you want it like that or like that, you just do that. And then, uh, anyway, so I had it at about this angle, and I just animated it to uh, go forwards by a... So I just animated it to go forwards. I gave it a simple animation. And I also, there was also this plane here. And, uh... I just anim I just gave it two keyframes of the same thing here, and then on frame fifty I animated to be up here. Now it is is there, and now we have a thing that we can right there. Oh yeah, also you're gonna want to configure a, an output folder, which is uh you'd want to go into your thing. And you'd uh, you know, PMP folder, at least if it's called for me, and hit plus, and then uh, let me just uh, click on the one I already made. Lemon, tutorial, lemon, 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 lemon. So now click on it, double click on it, then hit accept, and then it would say like this. You might want to do this, but I don't know, maybe you might, might want to do this. make the light rays appear suddenly and how to make the camera have this nice movement basically you take the camera and you keyframe it here at, at frame zero and here at 250 and then you just go to a uh, the graph editor not the driver but the graph editor and uh you know what uh, the handle type was set to free so hit handle type vector and now i we have this camera movement and now for that plane uh just uh add a plane and scale it and move it over so it blocks out the light i hate this flickering and uh no it's not i hate this little word uh well, anyway uh so you want to keyframe it here at frame zero and then and then the same place at uh, frame 30. So if I shift to so like this, you just want to have it stay there for 30 frames, and then at frame 50, you want to keyframe it so it moved out of the way, so that the lemon is visible in the light. And now we have this animation, which is pretty much good to go. I didn't know Brenda did that here. This is about how fast each frame is going to go, which is actually pretty good for 15 samples. Cycles is slow. But awesome. Okay, so I didn't actually render that thing that I said that started rendering. I got bored. So I'm gonna use the one that I already did render, which was actually my name easy, which is faster. Um this is the uh project in hit film that I used for uh it. And uh, I used some uh ambience from productioncrate.com which uh I will leave a link in the description. You can find some cool stuff there. Although, if you're doing visual effects, one thing I advise you very strongly not to do is to go on there, download a bunch of their VFX assets, drop them on top of your stuff in After Effects, and say, I'm a professional VFX artist. Please do more than that. But anyway, uh, I, I just use the bubbles VFX stuff because bubbles are kind of 
on Blender, and I'd already rendered the animation. In the future, I might make my own bubbles, but who cares? So I use ambience from Production Crate, and then, which is pretty much swimming sounds and some under swimming sounds and underwater ambience, which kind of gives up the. Which is a pretty nice, pretty nice sounding. The way I made the bubbles kind of get illuminated by the light is I just created a composite shot and I stacked a bunch of bubbles on it. And then I made a mask that just kind of follows the light opening. And I feathered in a bunch. And uh, also watch my other tutorials for hit film too. Because actually, I, I just realized without even thinking. But since I mastered this software so long ago, that that is like common knowledge. Sorry, just please watch some tutorials for HitFilm because it's really cool. So I decided to follow the bubbles, and then um, that's pretty much it. I also added some background bubbles. You can see a few in the background, even though it's not as many. The way I got them to be more bubbles, I suggested them with brightness and contrast. So you can see this one it has a lot of brightness, even though, but this one doesn't have too much brightness. If I go to... I don't even know why I'm doing this. I just kind of scroll through these for fun. I never have to use these. I always use Blender for stuff like this. It's kind of fun to play with. But anyway. Also, this is just a piece of music that I did that didn't use. You can, and you can probably tell why. So anyway, that's pretty much uh, it. Going to hit film, which is a free software, by the way. Uh, I'll leave you a link to uh, that in the description, too. Very free and very awesome. Time for time. Blend is also free. I don't appreciate any of that. You can put a proper button. Goodbye for now. This is what that dolly on that I showed you.